our wheat crops, our uh, well, our, our you saw what they did with chickens overseas. You know, slaughtering you know tens of thousands or millions, I guess, yes. of, uh, of chickens because uh, of uh, the, the uh, avian flu and and so on and so on. So you know, I could see even though we have pretty good protections in this country, I, I am worried, particularly with overregulation. Oh, and the thing you were talking about was San Joaquin, San Joaquin Valley. Tell them why that that was coming about. That's the scary part. I'm embarrassed because I forgot the name of the little critter, but it's this three-inch minnow. Now, there's a couple of reasons, arguably. One is diverting more water down to, to Los Angeles, but that's really not the primary issue. It's a, a little fish, a little minnow, that was declared an endangered species. And that has caused, uh, Uncle Sam came in and said, you're now on, now on water rationing. You will have 10% of what you had last year. And it's in effect. Right now, as of, as of a month and a half ago, there were in excess of 40 farms down the San Joaquin runs basically from, I guess, the north end of, uh, after the grapevine, on up yeah. into Modesto and short of uh, Sacramento. Yeah, and when you're talking farms, you're not talking like 10 acres here. We're talking no. tens of thousands of acres. No, big, big, big farms, old farms, been around for a long time. It's a real issue down there, and it's not being discussed hardly at all on the news. Local huh. news will touch it in the area. Beyond that, it's just uh, been blacked out. And okay, well, back to, to the questions then. So real quickly, you know, pretty much everybody understands that between uh, interruption to the food supply, whether that being on a, uh, on a growing basis from lack of water, uh, parasites, um, you know, bankrupt companies that don't, you know, because a lot of this is corporate now, um, and on the, uh, on the natural disaster side, interrupting that way, or uh, a panic that's caused, it strips the shelves, all these things are potential threats uh, to all of our food supply. So it, it makes sense, I've always believed it myself too, that it makes sense to um, put something aside for a rainy day, but, you know, what do you put aside and for how long? I mean, you know, there's different threats. Uh, a, a hurricane threat, you know, that might be only a month or two, you know, like Katrina. Well, that ended up being a year or two. <laughs> but give me a little bit of an idea of what, I, what a person should store. What are the, what are the things that you need? To live on, what should you store, and then let's look at some of the options within that. You bet. Well, you have fresh food, of course, frozen food that works as long as you have refrigeration. Uh, any sort of a disaster, it usually will go out. So that's what one week, right? Um, three days. Yeah, three one days. Week. Three days if you uh, don't open the refrigerator that much. Okay. Canned goods. Canned goods will work. They are basically they're not as good as fresh. We know that. They have a limited shelf life. They're heavy. Uh, your best your best answers are freeze dried and very high quality dehydrated foods. Okay. Uh, a freeze dried yeah freeze dried product. Once the water hits it, it's a fresh food in five to ten minutes, uh, ready to go. You really cannot tell it from what you buy at the supermarket. Now we do get, I do get you know, every now and then a customer, a potential customer, will call up and say, well I had that stuff in World War II of Korea and it was horrible. Well. Uh, freeze-dried food wasn't around then. This is a new product that came out as a result of the, the aerospace program. And okay. right, right now it's about 80% of what's used on, in our nuclear submarines for long hauls. It is an amazing product. You cannot tell it from what you buy at the supermarket. It's just, just that good. Well, so, go let ahead. me ask you about some of the other options, though. What about MREs? Well, keep in mind you're talking to an old soldier who ate MREs for 18 of my 26 years in the Army. Now, I do sell MREs. In fact, I'm working on a contract for a friendly foreign country um, right as we speak. Uh, I'm not real fond of MREs. They'll do a job. They'll do what they're made, meant to do. What are they meant to do? Well, uh, I can't say what the troops say, but they're, <laughs> they're meant to keep you on your, on your feet and going. Uh, taste levels can be okay. Can can actually be quite good in some cases. In many cases, they're eh, mediocre. After uh, three days or a week of them, most people are pretty tired of them. Uh, they can, unlike, uncommon to what people think, they do not have a long shelf life under most circumstances. People see them being used in the desert and they think, wow, they, that would last a long time. Well, that's not the case. Uh, uh, the government tested them at a constant 60 degrees for 130 months, 10 years, and still deemed them acceptable for troop use. And some people laugh at that, but that really means they're still in good order. But when they doubled the temperature to 120 degrees, they failed in six months. <laughs> 
Wow. So they're not so alone. So you put a case you put a case in your trunk as a bug out, you're 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 at risk. I would pull that out every year and throw it in the basement somewhere and mark a big X on it and keep it until you have to use it or give it to somebody else who needs it. But no, after a few months in the hot trunk, they're pretty well destroyed. Man, that's a good note to sell. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we talk about MREs. Uh, what about, like, uh, you know, I get a whole bunch of wheat. What, what about that? Well, wheat, beans... Uh, uh, legumes of all kind, uh, kinds of rice. Well, let me exclude uh, rice. It's been determined and uh, by uh, USDA that about 40% of the American public would have um, uh, an allergic reaction to a high wheat diet. I tell people, whatever types of food you eat on a daily basis is what you should store. Maybe you're having fresh whatever, freeze-dried or dehydrated. And again, I, I emphasize there, high-quality dehydrate, because there's some, a lot of dehydrates out there that are not of what I consider high-quality. But oh. the types of foods you're used to, if you have a high roughage diet, it's okay with our food. Uh, years ago, uh, we tried something. We had uh, an old basic four. It was wheat, milk, honey, and salt. And uh, we, were, uh, we put it away. Uh, this was uh, primarily my wife's uh, thought on it, but we said, okay, let's store it and let's try it. And we said we're going to go on it for two weeks. I was in the service at the time. Took some leave, and we tried it. For six days, we lasted. That high roughage diet, everybody was fighting for the restroom. <laughs> so it's not, it's not wise under any circumstance to try to change your diet radically overnight, and especially if it's in a time of, of crisis. A lot of stress, physical and mental, doing that, you will not survive well. You may not survive at all in a long period of time. So again, keep the food in there that you're used to having, I even tell people, if, you're, if you use junk food, put a little junk food aside, too, at least for a period of time to wean yourself. Now, you mentioned uh, Katrina earlier. We sold a lot of food, went back that way during Katrina or after, primarily. Uh, people found that one of the biggest problems was, too, um, having, uh, having adequate water. Potable water was a huge issue, and fuel to cook their foods, uh, as well as having to worry about being you know, washed away. The nice thing about the freeze dry and many of the dehydrates is it takes very little um, fuel to prepare it. In fact, all you do is heat the water and pour it on it. Uh, you, again, you have to have potable water, and we help people with that with purifiers and things like that. But uh, the thing is, the big, the big thing is have high-quality food, easy and quick to prepare, uh, good tasting. And I keep harping on it, but it's true. Our food is very good tasting. I taught survival in the Army. People will say, I've had all kinds of people say, well, I'll eat anything. Most people will not. The very young and the very old will generally not eat anything, and they will oftentimes perish in a, you know, in a long-term uh, storage situation. Now, whether it's two weeks or a month or whatever you think you need to have up to one or two years, we put together entire packages uh, of this sort of thing. But again, watch where it is. Don't change your diet a whole lot, not, over, not overnight. Okay, so the, you said 40% of people that study showed if they were storing wheat, 40% of the people counting on that wheat would be have an allergic reaction to it? Yes, of one sort or another. And many people know that they are allergic to gluten anyway. Wow. But when, when you think about it, wheat is pure roughage. It's very good food. It's wonderful food, but has to be used uh, properly. Okay. All right, so that's the bulk storage stuff. Probably not a bad idea to have some of that, but absolutely. What, what about life shows? Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to store that stuff. You know, that's one of the things we set up. It's not stored right; it, it can be destroyed, right? Yes, so, that's right. Uh, tell me about that. There's a government standard that all my packing, the people that pack for me, the products I sell, adhere to, and I require it with anything I sell. It's less than two percent residual oxygen. Why remaining oxygen? Well, they determined back in the early '60s, even well, even before that, late '50s. You get, uh, now we're talking about a dry food, in a container, an airtight container, and you remove at least 98% of the, the oxygen, you have a product that will sit on the shelf for decades and hold its nutritional level, uh, taste, uh, everything. It, it just will stay very fresh. Now, of course, things like heat, things like that, they do affect it, although our, our products are very, uh, they're not particularly heat uh, sensitive. They handle heat quite well, but there is still a, point at which you're destroy, uh, destroying product. Uh, uh, freezing, very cold, does not hurt it at all. 
Well, you told me about a guy that was uh, 